twelve thirty here. I'm in Florida. Oh, well done. Yeah, I was I was commenting to someone that this year the sessions really seem to favour people in a in Australia time zones. Did you notice that, Lars? Yeah, well, I did. The, the first session and it was nine thirty last night, so that was okay. Yeah, but it um, wasn't one in the morning. Yeah, yeah. which is yeah, that's correct. Which is unusual. I am doing an after party event thing in tomorrow, so I got to go at four a.m. But anyway, oh, I'm not excited. <laughs> <laughs> the last session I attended was at 5.30 a.m. yesterday, and I have not been to sleep since um, wow. attending the other sessions, so I am so tired. <laughs> I was about to say, yeah, I need one, you a brand of coffee. Yeah, yeah this one's oh. a little bit is differently structured to last, or to the one towards the end of last year, where that one was kind of like a repeat cycle, whereas this one, there's different stuff on at different at different times, so you can't just say oh, I'll catch this one later because a lot of a lot of it is just a single delivery, right. and and then recorded. Yeah. All right. I will and start because it is four thirty now, uh, my time. It's half past whatever it is to where you are. <laughs> um, so I'll just real quick housekeeping here. Welcome everybody to uh, this table talk session on uh, Microsoft Learn, basically, uh, and how you can use it in your uh, own learning path and career. So just a bit of information so we are the five lucky ones that get to divulge some information and talk to all you lovely people so there's myself Lars there's Mark Pradeep uh, Ree you can just call him Ree I'm very grateful thank you Ree for that because yeah. I messed people's names up I'm sorry um, and there's Safaris which I'm hoping I'll say right as well um, yeah. so we will be doing different section of, of the half hour so we've got a fair bit to go through um, bit of housekeeping please ask questions this is the whole idea of the tabletop is to ask question table talk rather than table talk. Um, please be on mute, ask questions in the chat, raise your hand, there's a little button that says raise hand, and we will try and get to you as well. I cannot promise we answer all questions, but we will do what we can. Um, and um, yeah, just interact and uh, share your LinkedIn, share your Twitter, share your tips, share whatever you want in the chat within the within reason, obviously, that is within this topic. Um, so that is all the slides I was going to share. So I'm going to not share my screen, I think. Yep, so that should have gone now. So first of all, I just want to talk a bit about Microsoft Learn, just set context. So if you are, if you are familiar, if you're not familiar, um, Microsoft Learn, is kind of a free platform that Microsoft has set up for, for, for learning, you know, hence the name. And it has a, I'm just going to bring up my website here. So if you go to docs.microsoft.com slash learn, you will get to Microsoft Learn and it is all free. Now there are all different kinds of ways that you, you can learn depending on how you like to learn. So if you want to read a lot, there's a lot to read. If you want to watch videos, there's a lot of videos to watch. If you want to do quizzes, a lot of quizzes are part of the learning paths, part of the modules. It's pretty much any way that you want to, to learn. Um, you can also, uh, it's gamified, so you get points, yay, um, whenever you finish something uh, and you get free internet points that you can brag about. Um, please go up unmute whoever's not unmute there's some very loud noise coming through um and um so that's that microsoft learn is a very quick introduction to it uh there's all levels are there so there's your, your beginner your intermediate your expert um there's a whole bunch of range of product it's not just azure which is what i've been using learn for but there's also power platform microsoft uh 365 etc etc so uh, i think that's enough introduction for learn um i am going to let Mark talk now um, about how to make a career start, um, I think. So take it away, Mark. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So so the part that I get to talk about today is something that I'm not really used to talking about, which is doing prep, doing study but without having a particular certification goal in mind. So I am very guilty of seeing a new exam announced, scanning through the exam objectives and going, I uh, wonder if I have to put any effort into passing this exam. Um, so over the years, I've probably I've done some pretty dumb exams for Microsoft over the years. Uh, if you know things that people uh, deny that these things even exist, and it's like it's on my it's on my card, it's there. Um, but there are going to be situations where you you know where studying for exams is not. Is just not the right goal. So it could just be, you know, the situation that you're in. You may not have the time to really dedicate to it. 
It might be someone who really likes to just sort of get all your exams done in a short time period. Uh, you'll do like a year of prep and then just go in, get three or four exams done at the same time. Um, but sometimes it's just that, you know, work and life get in the way of doing exams. The number of times, like I'll have someone say, oh, yeah, I stopped studying because I had to keep rescheduling the exam. So, so what I want to sort of reinforce with people is, yeah, you kind of need to, you need to break the learning away from the exam process itself. Now, years ago in IT, we could get away with basically mimicking the, the life cycles of the products that we worked with. So, and those of you who still work primarily with on-prem products, you probably can still do a bit of this, where you get to you get to upskill on a new version of something, and you might still be in that fortunate situation where those skills are going to be current for the next three to five years. Now, my guess is that most of you maybe have had a little bit of that in the past, but now you're at a point where you've, you really have had to start re rewiring your brain and the way that you think about uh, keeping up to date. So. And you have to get better at filtering information. You have to get, you know, in, in a lot of cases, you need to be more comfortable being able to say, I don't know, but I can find out. Um, because if someone says that they're an expert in a particular technology these days, unless it's something incredibly specific, I'm willing to call them a liar. Um, because technology, if someone comes to you and says, I'm an Azure expert or a Microsoft 365 expert, you know, you go, really? That's, that's fascinating. Who bestowed that title on you? Now, that's not to say there aren't people who know a lot about uh, those things, but, you know, there's such a broad set of uh, technologies that you know, like I'm, I'm pretty happy to say that there's probably like 90% of the things in Azure that I couldn't even tell you what they do. And I'm proud of that because it means I know what 10% of Azure does. Um, but let's just talk about some of the, you know, some of the different reasons why, you know, you should still be going through your study, even if it's not going to be associated with an exam. So. You know, really the first one here is that it's a short-term skill that's going to help you with your role. Um, or maybe, you know, you're just getting into the into the market and you just don't know what to focus on. Now, it's this is one of those things where if it's something that you don't have a passion for, it's going to be harder to tell you, you know, for a random person to give you advice on, here's the technology that you should look at. And some of the things that I've seen way too often over the years, and this is a good thing, is someone getting into IT through something that interested them on a personal basis. Or maybe you were doing another role where you got steered into doing some IT stuff and you loved that more than you actually loved doing your role. So in cases like this, you might just have to skill up really quickly on something. Now, you may not necessarily have the right skills to, to begin with, but if, but if at least you know some of the right buzzwords, you know the right terminology, you'll be able to sort of sit there and at least pick up a few of the things that are happening around you, maybe with some of the more uh, potentially more senior people uh, in your environment. Now, the other thing that you, you know, that you do have to think about, though, is okay, once you've got some of those short-term plans out of the way and, and the short-term skills that really help you with your current role, in IT, when someone says, oh, this is my 10-year technology learning plan, you can't really have a 10-year. I guess if you say, if you, again, if you're sticking to on-prem stuff, it's probably a bit easier to say that. But if it's cloud, you can't really um, you know, say, here's what I'm planning on learning over the next 10 years. So long-term here really is going to be a couple of years as opposed to it being you know, a five to 10-year plan. So make sure that you know, you're looking at things that are potentially extensions of what you're already doing, or maybe if you just want to change, change fields altogether. Let's say that you're just sort of doing IT support right now, but uh, doing some development work is your focus. Maybe you're not quite ready to jump fully into the world of development, but you start looking at some of the capabilities of, you know, some of the things you can do with DevOps, for example. Uh, maybe scripting isn't a skill you've got, but if you want to get into development, having scripting skills isn't going to hurt you. So there are going to be ways to uh, to go through and you know pick up the skills that you need focus on the areas that are you know important to you in the short term now in terms of you know, I guess another thing that comes up sometimes is are there any skills that you know that you acquire over your IT life over your per your personal IT life cycle that don't apply after a few years I would say absolutely not okay there's might be some incredibly rare exceptions but 
most of the time, the things that you learn early on are things that still come back in some form and you go, oh, hang on, it's easy for me to learn this new thing because it seems to be somewhat based on these things I've done previously. So, so don't get too up on a long-term skill yeah, if it's not necessarily related to what you're doing. The chances are you'll be able to extract value out of it as you move forward. So they're really the, I guess, the main things that I wanted to, to cover off there. But with Learn, yeah, you can just jump in, pick a topic, pick a subsection of a topic, just learn the thing that you need to learn, jump in, jump out as needed, as opposed to, you know, if you're someone who looks at the at a, at a learning path and goes, that's too much, don't do the learning path. Just pick the topic in the learning path that's of, that's of interest to you and use that. Uh, as the starting point. And then over time, you might go back and start backfilling some of those sections that you skipped as you start to appreciate the technology a bit more. So that's really good, Mark. Um, sorry, I've, I've just, there's a few questions I think we might just jump in and, and do. Um, Paul's got a question he says he's very interested in, in, uh, in asking. Paul, do you want to go off mute and just ask your question? Paul Jones? Cool, thanks, guys. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. All right, excellent. So I'm a 20-year IT professional. I've got an MCSC in Azure, but I wanted to refresh and get it um, more relevant for today. Um, I'm on the I'm doing the training for the AZ-104, um, but my question is: Is the AZ-900 is it worth it to take it? Is it um, worth it? Okay, if you're already MCSC in the past, I'd say it's probably not. If it's a technology you already know and somebody else is funding your exams, then the fundamentals exams are fantastic. But if it's something that's coming out of your own pocket, I'd be steering you towards AZ-104 instead. And what you'll find with that 20 years of IT, there'll be a whole, you know, this, that's a perfect exam that aligns to what I was just saying about, you know, it's the decades of experience that you've got that make other things easy. You'll be sitting in that as your exam going, hang on, a bunch of this is just core networking stuff that I've had to deal with for years. So this is so that's a perfect example of an exam where it's not necessarily what you're learning for the exam that allows you to pass it. It's the skills that you've already acquired translate directly to things the exam wants you to know. And can I just say a really question, good Paul? Uh, it does. Sure. If, if I can just a couple of seconds. So the, my plan after the 104 was the 102. Um, now, this is where, as you gave the example, my knowledge and my previous experience, it's got nothing to do with machine learning or artificial intelligence. So um, should I right now, um, because frankly, the 104 looks like it shouldn't be that hard. Should I focus more of my time and attention on the learning for the 102 um, and not ignore, but only hit like some of the 104 areas that I think are uh, more relevant. Does that make any sense? Yes. Yeah, so I always tell people to color code the, so download that PDF that's got the exam objectives, color code it red, yellow, green based on, you know, comfort level with the different technologies and anything that's green, eliminate it because the exam's not going to ask, the exam's not going to ask you anything tougher than what you already know on things you work with. Um, so, yeah, so it might be a better investment of your, your study time to focus on the thing that, yeah, just the things that are outside of your comfort zone should be the focus when you're preparing. Excellent. Thank you so much. Cool. Just a uh, follow-up as well. There's, uh, there's a few questions on what content is coming to learn and some missing content. None of us work for Microsoft. None of us blog. We don't know. <laughs> we have nothing to do with what the content is on learn. Just so as a disclaimer, uh, we can talk to how to use the content that is there, um, and then what we would use, but we don't know what's coming or what's going. So, um, is there anything you want to add, Mark? Or we might uh, we might. Uh, I think I think I've used enough. I've used enough time. So <laughs> yeah, that's very good. Though. Yeah, let's just say I wanted to add, add something to Paul's question. So Paul, where you asked about the fundamental examination, and as Mark mentioned previously, if somebody else is paying for it, uh, then uh, it's great to do it. So uh, I guess uh, you can utilize the uh, Microsoft uh, virtual uh, that, and they provide you one day of online training and then give you a free uh, examination attempt. So pretty much all the fundamental exams, including the Azure AI, data, Data, the Azure fundamentals, uh, those are covered as uh, 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 with a free voucher, as uh, I believe. So, if you're really interested to sort of brush up on your Azure skills, um, you know, like if you want to, then you can avail that option as well. 
Yeah, and and there's, and, um, and there's a cloud challenge that's uh, that's in progress in uh, as a part of Microsoft Ignite. So we can leverage on that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, pretty much with you about niche. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Mark and. Uh, uh, so, um, uh, so basically, uh, I would like to speak a bit about uh, how you find your uh, sort of uh, professional uh, ness in your career. So, um, I mean, there can be process for everything, right? And uh, I think one of the ways we could you could uh, really uh, get into where you want to is to to first evaluate where uh, uh, what your where your you know interest lies in, what your your real passion is what your values are and what you really want to achieve because you know unless you know that uh, unless you review uh, you know thoroughly review on what you really want to achieve i think uh, it's 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 not an appropriate to to go to market and check out what you really want to do uh, what you really want to achieve so basically once once you figure out what you really want to do uh, with respect to your your life goals and so on so I think it's really important to get involved with the with the with the community. For example, uh, say uh, if you really want to do something in in a Microsoft uh, platform, uh, whether it's specific to a technology or, uh, or or a Microsoft platform as a whole. So I think sort of uh, you should uh, start joining uh, Microsoft tech communities. That there's a MicrosoftTechCommunity.com, or there are several number of like including microsoft learn is a great platform a lot of uh, you know uh, knowledge it's a knowledge base for for almost all the products and technologies that microsoft has and then uh, there could be other ways to you know uh, mix up with people in the community maybe you could if you're not in, in linkedin please go ahead and uh, and and join linkedin and uh, try to connect with people uh, in your circle from your local community uh, those who you, who you think you can really, really look up to uh, there are a lot of people, right, and um, who follow the passion uh, like you, you do, and uh, you could uh, really start following them and see uh, uh, and uh, keep up with their updates and uh, and so on. Plus, uh, there could be a lot of like hackathons happening. You could simply join them. You know, there's, a, there's always a lot learning this uh, and getting involved in the community and uh, and uh, and understanding the market. The people in the in the area of your interest really helps. So uh, basically, uh, you know, once uh, once you are, you get a good hang of all of these, I think the next is to you know, sort of uh, narrowing down, like Mark said, narrowing down your your interest into some specific technology, uh, and uh, you could like start with the fundamentals of of I mean, Microsoft provides it. Like for example, uh, we just spoke about uh, the cloud challenge from Ignite. You. You complete one challenge and you get a free exam voucher, and and you can just just prepare for the exams and and give your um, your first thought, and uh, yeah. So uh, basically, I think so. Once you narrow down the down your ness, so um, the next would be to as a process, I would I would say the next would be to to sort of uh, uh, to really evaluate really if, if this is something that you really want in your in your life in your career uh, but yeah but this is how it works and uh, if it really doesn't work then you need to you know go back to the step one of the process and rethink on the whole process on what really didn't work and uh, yeah I mean eventually you would see yourself you know really growing uh, developing into a brand yeah I think so I, I think this is how we could really go about yeah Great. A couple of questions here, um, sort of what we're going to get to into in a minute about certificates as well, but it's uh, in about your niche. How do you choose a learning path on learn? Like which one should you start at or which, how do you know which you, um, um, you know, which is the right one for you? Yeah, this, uh, Lars, this is a really uh, good question because, uh, because, you know, uh, it really depends on what your background is as, as well. I mean, um, for example, if you, if you, if you uh, choose, say, Azure topics in the beginning, Azure is a little, I find it, this a little technical. Uh, but uh, say, uh, if you have some sort of a business background and you are really interested in business logics, uh, creating, uh, working with the business ideas and so on, maybe you should look for the, the Dynamics 365 uh, fundamentals part of the, the, the courses because it's all about 
it's all about the digital transformation business transformation and so on and but at the same time the all of these uh, these topics they really you know uh, they coexist with the other other uh, topics such as microsoft 365 so microsoft 365 basically is a productivity suite and and uh, if you're really about you know i want to be more productive with at work and uh, irrespective of uh, being very specific to business and so on so you could maybe uh, the person could you know uh, maybe start with microsoft 365 fundamentals as well but as you grow and if you think that you can be a little more technical and you want to really uh, move forward uh, with the with the being more dirty with the codes and so on maybe then you could look for the azure side of the things as well um, so it basically depends on what uh, you know background you come from as well but it, but having said that it doesn't mean that that uh, there's you have to be you have to you know you, know, uh, you have to go with the dynamics to with the properties, not with azure no it's not like that it totally depends on you what you are really want because you can just start from the beginning if you have passion to learn Azure, just go for it. Just go for the level 100 course, pass the exams, then level up yourself with say 104 or 204, depending on what your background is again, right? So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah no, that, that's, that's really, that's, really, that's, that's good. good. And it's like, like Jennifer, Jennifer was saying, saying uh, that you, you don't, don't have to, to um, necessarily know what you want up front. You can start reading a whole bunch of different topics. and. One, one of them, them hopefully, hopefully you, you might go, go oh, oh i'm, I'm reading, reading a lot about this topic maybe, maybe i do like this right there's, there's, there's ways of finding out what it is that you're interested in if you don't know so uh, i think we're going to move on we've got nine minutes left um so, so Sephiroth, Sephiroth, you want to talk about certifications because i know that's a hot topic for a lot of people because uh, certifications are an important part of what we do right so uh, go 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 hey <laughs> yes so just to uh, sort of speed it up a bit so uh, as we already know by now so microsoft has uh, divided the certification paths um, uh, as, uh, for, for technologies as well as from a learning level perspective so you've got your fundamental certifications across the board so, so there are four main areas, areas which you will find on learn. So uh, apart from four those areas, there are uh, other learning tracks, but from a certification perspective, there are four areas. One is Azure, then Microsoft 365, Dynamics 365 and Power Platform. So you've got a fundamental certification in each area, but for Azure, you've got uh, overall three, Azure AI, Data and Azure Fundamentals. And then you move up to a role-based certification. And the idea here is that Microsoft had identified that people working on a particular product and they, they do a, a sort of a particular kind of work. So for example, in my role, I work as a Dynamics 365 Power Platform Architect. So most of my time on projects is involved working on a particular Dynamics product, let's say Dynamics 365 sales. And that involves consulting with the client and giving them advice on what's the best way to solve their technological problems using that particular product. So that that is a very specialist role and Microsoft uh, very beautiful beautifully covers uh, that particular role with a functional consultant certification. So similarly for Azure and Microsoft 365, uh, again, um, Learn website uh, has sort of divided the product uh, subtopics within the products into their specialized roles. So you can pick and choose which product you want to do. But um, the thing to remember is that when you are on job, uh, you, there is no uh, hard boundaries where you say, okay, this is not my area. I did not study this part. So there is a lot of overlapping and also from an examination perspective, quite a few of the certificate exam, they overlap. Uh, now moving on from the intermediate slash role, uh, those consultant level exams, you have got your expert, so to speak, and that expert uh, exams uh, with the three star is the pinnacle uh, of the technology from that exams perspective. But again, as Mark mentioned in the beginning, uh, we have to take it with a pinch of salt. So expert doesn't mean that you don't, that you have to stop your learning and that's it. In the ex expert examination, does that just just means that at particular point in time when you took the exam, let's say 1st of March 2021, you were identified as an expert, but maybe by the next month, you may not be an expert anymore because as you can see last one day and again, hopefully tomorrow, with Ignite, there have been so much new announcement, new changes, so you have to keep learning always and examinations just have to remember they are a snapshot of your standing at any given point in time. Uh, so this is 
is one thing to do uh, and the other thing is that with the examination what microsoft has done is that you uh, they have provided you the skills which are measured uh, for a particular exam so you can find it on the certification slash examination page on the learn website and then they have also given you a suggested learning path again uh, uh, i believe there are different teams working within microsoft it's not a one person or a one team effort so i have noticed it that there uh, there are some gaps between the suggested learning path and the uh, study guide so you can't really say okay i'll just cover the suggested learning path and i'm good for the examination but from an examination study guide perspective you may have to cover other areas not mentioned in there uh, another good tip i just want to give from purely from a certification perspective and that is sort of to gamify it a bit and also to uh, and uh, in my opinion uh, to motive to self motivate is not to study from the learning path directly uh, because the learning path don't give you the indication of microsoft recommended time and also does not show you your progress so the best thing in my opinion if you take one thing away from a certification perspective take all those learning paths and create a collection so when you create a collection and that option is also uh, is available under your profile in uh, the learn website when you create a collection then you, the what the collection does and we can put anything so you don't have to say that okay i am studying for azure administrator i can only put in the learning path from administrator you can put anything dynamics 365 whatever in one uh, big collection and then what it does it at the top it shows you the total microsoft recommended time again it, it it's an indication you don't have to take it uh, what it says it's just an indication you may take less or you may take more uh, but the best thing is it gives you a, that percentage indicator that how much you have gone through so what i feel personally is that when i have to study for an examination and i have got i have shortlisted maybe 15 or 16 learning paths and then to keep myself motivated uh, I, I, I sort of see okay how many uh, what's my percentage going on in completion of the topic another thing and just quickly wrapping it up before you decide to take an examination please go on the certification page and look at when the content is being uh, scheduled for update so for example today is uh, in australia today is 4th of march so if i go if i decide to take the azure administrator exam today uh, i will just go on to the certification page first and see when the content is scheduled so the the website may say in red red font color that the study uh, guide is uh, will be uh, sort of update in 15 days uh, around 15th of march or 20th of march so uh, so with your comfort level with the subject you need to uh, take a quick decision whether you want to study with the current study guide and attempt your examination before that date otherwise it's no use to start studying now and when the code code study guides updates on the 15th of uh, march you may be in a position where you have to sort of study a whole, whole lot of material uh, again again this is purely from a certification perspective but as a as a mark mentioned if you are using the website purely from a learning perspective then uh, you don't really have to sort of uh, worry about what's going on with these study guides uh, so just quickly repeating uh, wrapping it up any any questions to get to know uh, there is a couple of questions on um Well, well, well comments slash questions, slash questions is saying, well, well the, exams the exams are changing all the time, all the time and there's always new material and there's always new stuff to learn. Uh, um, now, in my experience, I think because we just changed the role-based system, system, there was a lot, lot of changes the first 18 months, and I think that's going to slow down. I mean, what do you reckon, sir, for us? Yes, and, 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 and uh, the, that's the thing. The, it's slowing down and also with, uh, with the rate of the technology overall. You have to be uh, highly motivated if you are thinking about going down the certification path uh, because it's a very limited window where you, where you have the study guide uh, locked up. So it may be about, um, I, I guess, three, three to four months maximum before the study guide gets updated or before the, the content changes drastically. So you have maybe about three to four, uh, four months before you have to sort of go from zero to hundred for a particular exam. Also good to know is that um, when you are studying, just see what are the related topics. So as an example, um, I, I have my background in Dynamics 365 and Power Platform, but recently I'm just going into Azure. So what I did before I went really deep, I'm trying to get really deep, I just went through all the study guides and tried to see, okay, what are, what are the uh, sort of the, uh, overlapping areas. So with the new security exams coming up, uh, as, uh, and, and the um, Azure professionals will uh, um, probably appreciate, and so Azure Active Directory, just to say, as an example. That topic has its own exam now. 
uh, the, the security, security uh, identity and access administrator which is in beta and, and also, also that particular topic i found out uh, what, what i found, found from the study guides is that it's covered in almost all azure, azure subjects or uh, azure exam, exam then it takes about 20 25 percent uh, of every exam so, so, so it's good, good to know what, what are the common, common overlapping uh, uh, areas and focus, focus on those areas but again as i mentioned the window is very limited because of the chain change of development so you so you so will have only probably maybe two to three months, months uh, for each exam before it changes drastically. That's, 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 that's very thorough. thorough. Thank, Thank you very much. Um, um, there's a lot, a lot of questions, questions but they're kind of out of time. Um, I'm, um, happy I'm happy to hang around for a bit if anyone, anyone wants to, uh, to have a few more questions. But that is the 30 minutes up. Um, there are other um, sessions, sessions that are available now, I believe. So, uh, thanks, thanks everybody. everybody. Thanks to all my, uh, my panel team, team table, table topic, topic masters, masters, whatever you want to call them, um, um, and, and also, also to Mark Ninjacat. So, so that was a, an, an unadvertised guest. guest. <laughs> yes. yes. Bonus. Bonus. All right. All right. I did, I did bring in Ninja Sloth as well. As well. He, was just he was just sitting over there. there. I was going to have a raccoon with no pants, pants but I'm not allowed to show it. it. So, so we are PG rated, rated here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a very strong suspicion I missed, I missed a lot of the questions in the, in the comments. comments. So I was trying to scroll through. It's oh, Reba's doing well. Doing well. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of questions. questions. That's, all That's all good. I like, I like questions. questions. So, um, yeah, yeah. Feel, feel free. If, if anyone has a question to go off mute and, and ask, ask or whatever, we've got a few minutes. We can stick around. It goes so, so fast. What about, what about the exams themselves? themselves? Simon is asking. Yeah, that's yeah, that's Simon. If you can unmute yourself, because that's it. Sort of yeah, there's more, more, more about, about, about um, putting putting myself out there. there. I, I really, really struggle with um, exam anxiety. <laughs> and <laughs> in, in, in order for me to actually even be ready, be ready for an exam, exam, I have to like, like study, 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 study heaps, and heaps, heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps to be, feel really, really, really confident that I know the content. content. And, and you know, personally, uh, that's, that's sort of helped me back a bit from, from actually, actually doing these exams. exams. I did a whole heap of, you know, you know MCSC exams back in the early noughties, um, just, just end up end going, going overseas, overseas and missing out on my uh, uh, finishing the whole thing. thing. And, now, and now, like, you know, 20 years later, I'm now seeing myself having to look at this stuff again. And and that's what I wanted to sort of get the take on it from you guys before I go jump in down there. Thing thing trying to do these. Mm -hmm. so, so I know it's changed. changed. Like, you know, they're, they're all online, online now, now and proctored and, and, you know, so, so what's, what's your experience? Yes, I mean, I've got the perfect, perfect tip for you. So, so reduce, reduce your exam uh, anxiety, yeah, and uh, that's a fairly, fairly common. common. I've seen it among my friends as well, and I used to have it. So with the, uh, and we mentioned it before, uh, if you register for the Microsoft Virtual Training Days, uh, you can, as of now, give a free examination for Azure Fundamentals, AI Fundamentals, Data Fundamentals, Dynamics 365 Fundamentals, and uh, Power Platform Fundamentals. So that's five exams in all. And, and, and believe me, don't, don't get, get confused, confused uh, with, with the fundamentals, fundamentals name. Some of, Some of those exams are not, are not uh, that easy. Uh, but uh, but uh, in your, your particular case, case what, what it gives is, is you, 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 if you take those five exams, exams uh, it, gives it gives you an idea, idea of, uh, you know, like, you know, like the exam process, process how the online, online, if you're taking it from home, online, what the online process is, how do you have to, you know, like identify yourself that you are Simon, how do you identify your surroundings that nobody is watching you, and, 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 and also, also with, with the invigilators, sometimes, sometimes they are very strict. Uh, if you put it, in, you're, you know, like you're doing something, doing something like this, they say, don't, you can't do it. You, you have to sit straight. straight. Those, those kind of yeah, those, those kind of things. Kind of things. So, so you get the experience of uh, like, like with every exam, you get the same experience. Number one, and you also get to sort of practice on the timekeeping for the examination, and also it slightly reduces your anxiety. Because I know most of some of the people they're good with technology, but then they struggle with these type of things. I have to sit straight. I have to sit in a room where nobody can come in, and those kind of things. So. 
get, get tests with, with those five free, free exams. exams. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right, that's right, my yeah, right, 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 yeah. And the, the other thing, thing as well is, uh, uh, you get better at doing Microsoft exams. Um, so, um, so the longer you've been working with the technologies, technologies you, you, yeah, so, so obviously, obviously you've been working with this stuff for a while based on when you said you started going down the MCSE path. But what, what you'll find, find yeah, you know, to, a to a surprising degree is the ability, the ability to eliminate incorrect answers because you'll just look at some of the multiple choice questions going, that's something that's completely unrelated because they use the, yeah, a lot of the, especially with the fundamental exams, a lot of the things that you see in those is they'll use things that have got somewhat overlapping names to try to confuse you. Um, or, or, you know, if it's, let's say you're doing use your one and it's a question on some kind of database, they're going to throw in anything with database, DB or SQL potentially in as an answer. And you'll look at some of them going, Oh, they're, oh, they're asking, asking for a database. database. They're not asking for the Azure database, database, database migration <laughs> service. So, so even like, like as an example, the like, like I did the SC nine hundred beta on Saturday because I've got a, a wonderful life. life. So, so I did it on Saturday, <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was like a fifty question exam, and just you know mostly using yeah, well, most of it was pretty easy, but it was like a thirty minutes for fifty questions. Um, now that's also because. My, my, my main, main goal, goal when, when I'm doing exams, exams is to get them done as quickly as possible to just, just get it over and done with. with. Um, because, because I know that if I go back and overthink things, I'm going to change answers that I know are uh, incorrect. So, so I'll just sort of plow through, through, through them and people like back when we used to do the test centers, they like, go, oh, you finished already. It's like, yeah, like staring at the screen for 20 minutes isn't like it's not a magic eye where the answer pops out of the screen at you the longer you stare at it. Like either I know it or I don't. There's no like, like, like there's, there's food to be eaten, there's places to go, let me, let me, let me out of here. So, yeah, so I just don't, I, I know this is like terrible advice for you, but it's like if you don't, like if, if you're not passing, Fundamental, fundamental training, training and there's so much, much nervousness, nervousness around it. Around now, it. now luckily, luckily for these people, they're actually working for an organization, organization that actually, actually pays for their exams. exams. Yeah. So, so, when so when I, I tell them, just, just treat it as a trial run, you know, yeah, do, yeah, do the real exam as a practice exam, exam and there's two possible outcomes. outcomes. The first one is the best outcome, which is you pass without putting in anywhere near the study you thought you had to do. The second one is you didn't pass, but you've got a much better idea of what you need to know. And, and like, I, like, I don't, I, I think that's good advice, but yeah. <laughs> there will probably be people <laughs> telling me that that's terrible advice. Yeah. 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 Take it seriously. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to do EZ 104 for the third time in a couple of weeks. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It's, uh, you, you have all failed. Well, well, I, I want to pass it. I'm a developer. I have no, I know nothing about his admin, yeah. right? Yeah. So, 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 yeah, AZ-104, um, sorry. sorry, I'm talking over the top of you. I, I, I had to do a bunch of training on, that, on, on its on 103, the predecessor to it, but not too dissimilar to a large Australian bank. And I asked people what their job roles were at the beginning of the training, and I accurately predicted who would pass and who wouldn't pass. The people who passed were all the people with Active, active directory on-prem on prem skills, skills because, because that, that meant that they also had to, had to know something about networking. networking. It, wasn't it wasn't the AD stuff, stuff that helped them. It was, it was that they understood submitting and things like that. Like that. Oh. Whereas anyone, anyone who was coming at the DevOps side, side they, were the they were the ones who were us. And, and now, this now this is not me saying anything bad. It's just the skill sets being different. They were like, what's the slash 16 at the end of that thing that looks like a phone number? And it's like, okay, that's 30 to 35% of the exam. Your, yeah, 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 you're in trouble. Yeah, So, yeah, that's right. one of the things where, but, 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 but even, even there, there, like it was, even if, even if you put the, the exam description, description between AZ-103 and AZ-104, they really cleaned that up because the AZ-103, sorry, I spent way too much time on this stuff, but the AZ-103 description was basically saying you had to be an on-prem admin with X number of years experience. They didn't, they didn't put, put it in those, in those words, words, but, but, but for the things they wanted, they wanted and as your administrator to know, the things in the objectives did not match to a cloud role. It, it matched to that, that, that scenario I gave you of the person who knew Windows server, server and, and therefore had to know something about networking. 
Yeah, yeah, look, I think, I think I'll find there'll be, like, some of the, the fundamentals exams are tough, especially when you're getting, I don't know, they're tough when it's the areas that you don't really know about. So, I did Power, power Platform, platform which, I'm which I'm sure for you, Lars, Power, power Platform fundamentals, fundamentals, you'd laugh all the way through it, going, when do the questions start? This is like an informal chat. But for me, it's like, I don't know, I don't work with this stuff. Like, anything that I'm able to answer correctly here, I basically learned in the last 24 hours. That's why I from... Yeah, that's, that's why it's important. That's, 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 that's why it's good to give the fundamental exams because, because number one, you, you get a taste of what the uh, of breadth, breadth of the technology is all about. So, as an example, when I gave Microsoft 365, um, most, most of the stuff, stuff was new for me. Um, and, and, and but but it is good to know because with with the modern workplaces now, the boundaries of having saying okay, I just work on a particular product or I just work, you know, like in a very limited skill set, is is growing out. So you need to know a bit more stuff especially if you if, if somebody is working on the consulting side not on an end user and so you need to know a, a lot of things so and also sometimes what i feel like as i mentioned previously that i'm trying to get into azure i, I like when i did the fundamentals for azure I, I really like it so there is a possibility and an opportunity of a career shift as well so somebody who's on who's, who's like an azure developer something they um, if they study fundamentals for power platform they may say okay now this technology they may want to get into you know like change, change their career path slightly go into that technology and again, and again you know if if, if, if you have ex exam fears good and great to give an exam on fundamental level free of cost for other technologies that will be tough for you to get an idea of the examination and everything and also just i forgot to mention before and one thing is that mark has mentioned if you fail the exam uh, from from a uh, from a purely um, like a logistics perspective or a boarding perspective, it, 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 it is not published anywhere. So if you don't tell anybody that you are taking an exam, nobody needs to know you have failed it. Uh, so, that's uh, so that's another technique, technique to get the can, can get your fear out of the way of taking exam, exam and also from a transcript perspective if for example a prospective employer asks you can you please submit your official microsoft transcript it does not show your fail exam attempt so you don't have to worry about and, and, and then i'm trust me one of my friends he wasn't giving exam just because of this this reason he said i don't want a red mark on my exam i said listen it's not your university degree uh, where you have your withdrawn votes shown also if, if you fail the exam doesn't matter don't, don't tell anybody you, you attempted the exam. You don't have to tell what, what happened to your attempt. attempt. And, also and also, it will not appear on your transcript. So, I failed exam in the past, but nobody needs to know. That's it. <laughs> but we, but we, but we just uh, got to know that, sir. Yeah, but, yeah, you, but you did not know, know <laughs> which exam I failed. So. Everyone knows. Everyone knows. Yeah. <laughs> thanks very much. I'm going to have to really uh, sign it. off. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, yeah, thanks for the question, Simon. Simon. That was really good. Um, so, um, yep. yep. Thanks, thanks, everybody, for joining. Uh, I'm going to go and eat cake or something. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> but, um, all right. Thanks, everybody. Surprise, surprise. We, yeah. we didn't have a problem <laughs> filling time. <laughs> no. <laughs> exactly. Bye-bye. Yeah. Uh, uh, hey, thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you all. Bye. Thank you.